Hey everybody, it's Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to our Blue Dragon Money Making Guide. If you're looking for a Blue Dragon Guide because it's your Slayer assignment, not just for money making, then this guide will also work for you. Let's get right into it with the recommended levels. This guide will show you how to kill blue dragons using melee and range. If you plan on meleeing the dragons, I would suggest having 70 plus in each of your melee stats. You can kill the dragons with lower stats, but it is going to be pretty slow. For range, you want to have at least 61 range, mainly so you can use that rune crossbow. I would also suggest having 70 agility so that you can use the pipe shortcut. It's not required, but it will save you a lot of time and an inventory space. Let's talk about what you want to wear to the dragons. I'm going to start with the melee setup. I'll go through this fairly quickly, so if you need to pause the video at any time, go ahead. Blue dragons are not very strong, so if you don't have the absolute best setup to kill them, you can still make some good money. If this is your slayer assignment, then obviously you want to be using the slayer helm, otherwise void armor is your best bet for quick kills. In your cape spot, a fire cape will be your best option. If you're going to use an obsidian cape, keep in mind that an untrimmed skill cape has very similar stats. Your best bet for a necklace would be the Amulet of Fury. The glory will work fine though. You will want to use a one-handed weapon since you're going to need some sort of anti-fire shield. The Abyssal Tentacle will give you some of your quickest kills, but it is degradable, so you could just use a normal whip if you do have it. If you are using Void, then you're going to need the Void Knight Top, otherwise a Bandos Chestplate is your best option. Same goes for your legs. If you're using Void, then you want to wear your Void Knight Robe, otherwise Bandos Tacits. For your shield, you're going to want to use an anti-dragon shield. Obviously, if you already have a dragon fire shield, that's a better option, but I would not go out and buy one just for this. Primordial boots are the best option for your feet, though dragon boots will work just fine. In your glove spot, you're going to need your void knight gloves. If you aren't using void, then you want to wear borrows gloves. In your ring spot, the berserker ring would be a good option. Whatever ring you use, it's suggested that you imbue it in the nightmare zone. Let's move on to your range gear. I'm also going to try to go through this pretty quickly, so if you need to pause, go right ahead. If this is your Slayer assignment, then the Slayer Helm is likely your best option, though if it's not imbued from the Nightmare Zone, then it's not going to give you any bonuses for ranged. Otherwise, you do want to use Void. Ava's Accumulator is highly suggested for any ranged training, as it will pick up your ammo for you. In your Necklace spot, the Amulet of Fury is going to give you the best stats. If you plan on using a crossbow, then broad bolts are your best option for ammo. They have the same bonuses as adamant bolts, but addy bolts can get pretty pricey. So if you can't use broad bolts, I would suggest downgrading to mithril. If you use the blowpipe, then mithril darts will do the job and again are cheaper than their adamant counterpart. The blowpipe will provide you with the fastest kills, but I really don't suggest using it for this because it is very pricey to use. If you already have an armadile crossbow, then I would suggest that. But because of how expensive it is, I would not suggest buying it just for blue dragons. For your body and your legs, you want to wear your Void Knight gear, otherwise Armadile gear is your next best bet. You will be safe spotting the dragons, so you can wear your Odium Ward. You can get attacked occasionally while safe spotting, like when you're going to pick up some of the loot. So some people do use an anti-fire shield, I would suggest just using a potion instead. Pegasian boots are the best for range, but because of those ranger boots, they are pretty pricey, so snakeskin boots work just as well. Borrow's gloves are the best for your gloves, but a combat bracelet will do the job. And for your ring spot, you want to wear an archer's ring, preferably imbued, that will double its stats. Now that you have your setup ready, you just need to prepare your inventory. For a melee setup, you only need super attack and strength potions, an anti-fire, a falador teleport, and some food depending on your level. For your potions, I would suggest taking two doses of attack and strength and one dose of extended anti-fire or two doses of regular anti-fire. These will usually last almost exactly how long the trip takes and that will allow you to drop the empty vials for some more inventory space. The amount of food you bring does depend on your defense and HP levels. Usually around five swordfish will do the job though, but if, if you're really looking to perfect it, it's just going to take a couple of tries for you to figure out how much food you require. For range, you don't need as much. Two doses of range potion for the same reason you would bring two doses of super attack and strength. If you aren't going to wear some sort of anti-fire shield then I would suggest bringing an anti-fire potion too because you can take a couple of attacks and it would be dangerous to just suddenly have a 50 hit on you from these blue dragons. I would also bring one to two swordfish for these occasional attacks though you may find it isn't needed. Also make sure you bring your Falador teleport. I suggest using the Tavalry Dungeon to fight blue dragons. It can get crowned in the dungeon, but that's because it's generally the best place to fight them. Once you have your inventory and armor ready, head over to the Tavalry Dungeon from the West Falador Bank. 
You do need 5 agility to get over the small agility shortcut by the bank. If you don't have 70 agility, then you will have to bring a dusty key and go all the way around the dungeon to get to the blue dragons. Once you have arrived at blue dragons, if you're using melee, just have at it. I would suggest using the second room if you are using melee as most rangers don't tend to go into that room, so you usually have less people to deal with. If you're using range, then there are a few safe spots for you, and I'll be showing you the ones I mainly use. This spot is usually the first I check, couldn't tell you exactly why, I just do like setting up here. It only works for this dragon though, so if you're in a world that isn't filled up, you will have to move spots between dragons, but that's really not that big of a deal. This is the most efficient safe spot in my opinion, there are two dragons that you can fight from this spot. You can attack the one that I'm attacking now, and the one that spawns just west of me. The final safe spot is up north, as you can see me using here. Most players seem to use this one, so it's generally pretty crowded. Obviously there are other safe spots, but these are the three that I tend to use. A lot of players only pick up the bones because they are worth more than the hides. I really like to pick up both the bones and the hides for more money per kill. It does require more bank trips, but this is already a very quick bank trip. Once you have filled your inventory, teleport back to Falador and start again. If you pick up both the blue dragon hide and the dragon bones, each kill is worth between 4 and 5k, generally closer to 5k because dragon bones are pretty pricey right now. I can get about 80 kills an hour, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, and that's at a medium level of ranged. That means I'm getting about 400k an hour, so if you're at a higher level, that'll be getting even higher, but 400k an hour for medium levels, not too bad. That's gonna wrap it up for this blue dragon guide, everybody. I hope you got some helpful information, and best of luck fighting your blue dragons. I want to thank you guys for watching today's video and helping support the channel. If you enjoyed the video, we would appreciate it if you would hit that like button and tell us what you liked about it in the comments section below. If you're looking for more videos like this one, then go ahead and join the cul-de-sac by clicking that subscribe button and follow us on Twitter at TheEdBoys. All links are in the description.